What's up, nerds? Welcome to Sanchineering. You're watching Chemical Process Analysis, and we're doing mass balance, the main objective of process engineering. Fresh orange juice contains 12 whey percent solids, and concentrated orange juice contains about 42 whey percent solids. In an orange juice production process, a single evaporation was used for the concentration, but volatile constituents of the juice escaped with the water, leaving the concentration with a flat taste. The current process overcomes this problem by bypassing the evaporator with a fraction of fresh juice. We are to draw and label a flow chart for this process and calculate the mass balance. So for any process, the first thing you want to do is draw the process flow diagram. In this case, we have our first unit, which is the evaporator. And normally we read the feed directly into the first unit, but in this case, we have a bypass. A bypass is nothing more than taking a look at your system and extracting an aliquot or a portion of fluid from your overall system, allowing the reaction to reach completion and then adding the fluid back into the system. We can represent this by adding a bypass unit before the reactor and then adding a mixing point after the reactor. And now we can label our feed into the bypass, which I'll label as M1 and this contains 12 whey percent solids. So part of the output from the bypass unit is entering the evaporator, which I'll label as M2, and the other part is bypassing the evaporator into the mixing point, and this is going to be labeled M3. So what do you think the evaporator is doing? That's right, it's evaporating water, which I'll label this stream as M4. The output of the evaporator into the mixing point I'll label as M5, and then finally the product will be M6. Try to be really careful about the mass fractions because some of them are already given in the problem. Since we have no given information about the feed mass, I'm going to assume a basis of 100 kilograms, a nice round number to make things easy. Remember the basis is arbitrary. Next, let's talk about our equations. As always, the equation for mass balance, when in doubt, n equals out. Also, we'll need mass fraction, denoted by x, and we'll have degrees of freedom, which is the number of unknowns minus the number of independent equations. Sweet. So we drew our entire process flow diagram, which we can use to write our mass balance and solve for our equations. The first thing I like to do is the overall mass balance. Draw an invisible box around the entire system and think about what's going in and out of the entire system. We have the inflow M1, the evaporation product M4, and the product M6. Now using the mass fraction, we can write a similar equation for the overall solids balance. But look at stream 4. We can assume that it's pure evaporated water, such that X4 is actually 0. Which means we have 0 degrees of freedom. So solve for this algebraically by yourself. Next, we do the same exact thing for the bypass. We have our overall mass balance using M1, M2, and M3. We know M1 as 100 from our selected basis. And then we need to think about what the bypass actually means in terms of our mass fractions. Let's look at our system again. We have our pot of oranges, and the concentration inside the pot. We take a little bit out. Is the concentration different when we took anything out? Think about it. Well, the answer is no. One more time. So we have our system at some concentration or mass fraction, and we're taking our aliquot or our bypass and we're analyzing the concentration. At no point did the concentration change. Therefore, when we write our mass balance for the bypass as x1 m1 equals x2 m2 plus x3 m3, x1, 2, and 3 should all be the same. Therefore, this equation is actually not independent from the other, which means we don't have zero degrees of freedom and we can't solve for this yet. Now since we're almost done and the rest is really similar, I'm going to speed through this next part. We're doing the mass balance on the evaporator by plugging in the values we know and trying to solve for the constants that we don't know. So in this case we have three unknowns and two equations, so this is one degree of freedom. And again for the mixing point, similarly we plug in the equations, plug in the mass balance, and again we have, we have three unknowns and two equations. So, we're basically done with this problem in terms of the chemical engineering. We read the problem and we drew the process flow diagram 
and then we wrote our own system of equations that we can solve for algebraically. Unfortunately, in this video, I won't be solving that for you because that's just the algebra and I really encourage you to try to solve it yourself. In fact, if you got through the entire video and paused along the way and tried to solve everything by yourself, I highly encourage you to turn off the video and do everything again all from scratch and then teach someone else how to do it. That way you'll know for sure you understand the actual principles of how to solve this problem. Sometimes translating the problem statement into a tangible problem solution is actually the most difficult part. For instance, in this problem, understanding which portion of the mass fractions correspond to which stream in the process flow diagram, that can be a little bit challenging. But I assure you, if you try the problem by yourself without referring to the video, then you'll be ready for your exams. So that's it for this video. Please feel free to share this with your friends, family, and your dog.